Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today I'm going to show you how to make the adult size version of the crocheted harvest hats or pumpkin head hats. And um, I'm going to show you one here. This is actually a child size, but like I said, I'm going to show you how to make the adult size. If you're interested in the various sizes, I have this available in my pattern on my Ravelry page. Um, it's only $1.99 for the pattern and with it you get the three sizes for the adult, child's, and infant size. For this project, I used Red Heart Super Saver. I have this color in called Carrot, and I'm also using Patty Green. Um, you can use whichever colors you have on hand. If you don't like to use Super Saver, you can choose whatever worsted weight yarn that you would like. I will say that for the green, you don't need an entire scan. Actually, you don't need an entire scan for this hat of either color. So if you have at least half a scan of the Super Saver in orange, you should be fine. And I believe with the green, you're only going to need uh, around 20 yards or probably much less than that. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what hook we're going to need. We're going to use a size J or 10 or 6.00 millimeters for our crochet hook. And I always recommend that you have a yarn needle handy and a pair of scissors. Starting with the orange or the carrot color, we're going to go ahead and chain 8. Now remember, this is for the adult size. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. After that, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first chain to form a ring. Just like that, okay? Now we're ready for round one. We're going to chain one, and we are going to work 14 single crochets just by going into the middle. I'm going to go ahead and crochet around the extra thread that we started with, so I can go ahead and hide that. I won't have to worry about hiding it later. So I'll go ahead and work 14 stitches into the ring. To begin round two, after we've chained one, we're going to work two single crochets in each stitch of the round. Make sure you work two in the same place where you just joined. And two in each all the way around until you get to the last stitch. When you get to the last stitch, we're just going to work one single crochet in that round and I'll work that as we go. So just for now, two stitches, two single crochets in each stitch. Okay, we come around to the last single crochet and just work one single crochet in that last stitch. That will give you a stitch count of 27. If you need to, go ahead and check to make sure that you have 27 stitches. Now let me show you this little space here. It looks like a stitch, but it is not. That's where we joined the last round. So make sure you don't add any extra in there because the stitch count is very important. And then we join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet of the round. Now we're going to chain two. Notice that I haven't turned yet at the end of any, at the rows. That will come later, but right now I have not needed to turn. Now for round three, we're going to work two double crochets in each stitch around. Okay, so at the end of this round, after we work two double crochets in each stitch around, we should have a total of 54 stitches. It's very important that you have 54 stitches. After you've crocheted two double crochets in each stitch around, your hat's going to look a little bit like this. It's going to look really wavy and kind of weird, and that is perfectly normal. This is going to totally settle out in just a few rows and as the hat progresses. At this point, with 54 stitches, we have reached the total number of stitches for the rest of our rounds. So we're going to join with a slip stitch in the first double crochet of the round, like so. And for round number four, we are going to chain two, and we're going to front post double crochet in each of the next five stitches. Now, if you're brand new to crocheting with post stitches, let me just show you how easy this is. I'm going to go very slowly so that you can understand how to do this. For a front post stitch, instead of going in through the top loops like you would normally, you're going to give it a belt. You're going to go in and you're going to wrap the hook around the body of the stitch like this. 
It's kind of like giving it a belt. And then you're going to pull a loop up. We've already wrapped for a double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Just complete the stitch the way you normally would. I'll show that to you again. It's kind of a slowly. We put our hook around the stitch. Now notice that I'm not giving it a, a scarf up here like around the neck, but more like a belt around the belly of the stitch. Okay, and then you just pull up a loop and you complete your double crochets. And actually, it's easier to do this once you get the feel and using the, the nerve endings in your tall man and thumbkin, um, they really, these fingers really help to guide the hook because you feel the hook coming through and it can just, you know, guide the hook to the other side. When I'm crocheting, let's say at nighttime and maybe my family is watching a movie, these kind of projects are actually easier to work on because it's more by feel than by visual. Um, I can do this a lot better than you know having to work up by looking at everything. Okay, so now we've just worked five front post double crochets. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna work one back post double crochet in the next stitch. Very similar, except we're going to come in the back door. We come in behind the stitch, and instead of buckling the belt in the front, we're going to tie it in the back. We go around the stitch, go out the back side door, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So it's kind of like in the back. Okay, so now we're going to do this all the way around for round four. I'll do this with you one more time. We're going to front post in five stitches. You can see how easy this can be. So that should be the fifth. Double check. Let's go ahead. One, two, three, four, five. That's correct. And then we're going to do a back post. Just like that. I'm going to do that all the way around. I'll do it one more time. Five front post double crochets. And then after you complete the five, one back post double crochet. Okay, so this is what you're doing all the way around. After working this all the way around, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch, just like that. Now for rounds 5 through 21, we are simply going to repeat round 4 like we just did. So I'll start you off again. We're going to chain 2 and we're going to work a front post double crochet in the first 5 stitches. 3, 4, 5, and then do a back post double crochet in one stitch. I'll do that again. Front post double crochet in the next five stitches. And then a back post double crochet in the next stitch. So you're going to do this all the way around and then you're going to join with a slip stitch in the first stitch, the first double crochet of the round just like we did at the end of round four. So go ahead and do that um, through rounds 21. So the, what you can do to see how far you've gone, start with this as round one and just count one, two, three, four, five. This is the fifth round. So you're gonna do that until you count to 21. At the end of round 22, I'm gonna join with a slip stitch and let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. I've gone ahead and turned the hat wrong side out so that we can count the rounds together. Okay, so we have one, two, those were the single crochet rounds, and then three, which was the first round where we doubled the double crochets, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, rounds. Okay, so let's turn the right side back out again. And notice how the top is kind of uh, 
you know, kind of settled out up there. And I may have said at the beginning that we will be turning at some point. Actually, that's not true. We're not going to need to turn for any of these rounds. So now we're going to be working rounds 20 through 24. I'm sorry, 22 through 24. So that's going to be three rounds, three rounds. And this is how you're going to work these. This is, this is working um, simple post stitch ribbing. We're going to chain two. And this is what you're going to do for three rounds. I'm just going to show you one round and I'll have you do it for three. We're going to work a front post and then we work a back post, double crochet. These are double crochets. Front post, double crochet. And, and then we work a back post, double crochet. We're going to work this all the way around. Okay, just like so. After working this all the way around, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet or front post double crochet of the round. Go ahead and chain two and then we're going to work this two more times. So you're going to work a front post double crochet and a back post double crochet and as you work these just like we did with the other section make sure that the front post is worked over the front post and the back post is worked over the back post. Okay, and so these, these ribbing lines should continue to grow. So go ahead and work two more rounds. Finish this round and work one more round, and then I'll show you the join. At the end of round 24, we're just going to join with a slip stitch like so. Let's go ahead and give it a chain, give it a tight pull there, and cut a nice thread at least four to five inches long so that this will be easier to hide when we do the finishing touches at the end. Okay, so the hat is complete. Now, if you're making this hat for yourself and you don't like the length of this, if you want to make it longer, just add another row or so of ribbing. If it's too long and you don't want it this long, um, you can just take a couple or one or two of these rows out. Okay, now it's time for us to work on the top of the hat. Okay, first we start to make the stem of the pumpkin and to do that we're just going to join. You can join anywhere along the original chain and we're going to be working in between the single crochets that we work. So go ahead and join with a slip stitch and we're going to make 14 single crochets evenly around. I'm going to go ahead and put that string back down in that hole so I'll, I can hide that when we get done here. So just work one single crochet. I'm going to do this slowly and do the whole thing with you because I know these little things can be the trickiest. I hope you can see the, the single crochet, the two loops of it there. I'm just going in between and I'm going to, whatever you do with this, make sure that you do it consistently. Okay, so that's why I'm trying to be very careful to go in between each single crochet. I'm going to go in between all of these and let me see how many I have. Let me just do a double check on that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so I'm going to join with this slip stitch to that first single crochet of the round. After we do that, we're going to, I'm going to chain one and I'm going to single crochet in the first stitch. Now I'm going to work a double crochet, I'm sorry, a, a single crochet decrease over the next two stitches. And when we do this is pull up a loop and then pull up a loop in the next stitch, yarn over and pull through two stitches. So I'm going to do that 
all the way around a single crochet in the next stitch and then a decrease by pulling up a loop in the next two stitches yarn over pull through all three loops and that's a decrease so go ahead and do this all the way around at the end of this round we're going to join with a slip stitch chain one you should have 10 stitches around the top now we're going to just single crochet in each stitch around around all 10 single crochets at the end of the round we're going to join with a slip stitch we're going to give it a chain pull it tightly and we're going to fasten off make sure you leave at least a, a, a strand four to five inches minimum actually that's a little bit more than that i kind of like my strands left long okay so now we have the stem now we're going to work with the vine okay so for the vines we're going to join on the first row of the stem that we just finished here just go around one of those stitches go ahead and i'm going to go ahead and use both of these strands as i pull it through just to give it a little added strength and the directions say to chain 20. so go ahead and work 20 chains that's 10 11 12 13 14 15 need to get more yarn 16 17 18 19 20 okay after we've done those 20 chains we are going to crochet starting in the second chain from the hook we're going to work two single crochets in each stitch and i'm just going to work them along one of the sides you don't have to work in the back bump i mean if you want to you can I just find that a little more time consuming and difficult, but um, but I like to just work along one side. Make sure that we do consistently, like if you're gonna work, um, I'll point this out, like if you're gonna work in this side of the V, just do that consistently along for this. And this is gonna give um, this strand a nice, curl you can see how it's already curling and this is just simply due to the increased number of stitches that are being worked into the chain okay, i'm going to go ahead and continue two single crochets in each chain and then i'll show you what i have okay after working all those single crochets this is the nice little curl that i got creates a, quite a cute little vine now i'm going to go back to the same stitch and i'm going to do another slip stitch in the same place and then we're going to do that one more time we're going to chain 20 and again after chaining 20 we're going to work two single crochets in each chain after working two single crochets in every chain we're going to do another slip stitch in that same place and then we're going to give it a tie or a little chain and pull it really tight now I'm going to clip the thread and we are almost finished. Okay, we're done with our crocheting, but now we have some very important things to do. And that is to hide these unsightly threads. And let me show you how to, you do this in a very quick and easy manner. This is called a yarn needle and this is going to be your friend. Okay, I love using these to hide loose strands. They really are a lot more effective than trying to use um, a crochet hook. So you thread the needle into there. Now we're gonna go actually into the inside. Okay, I'm gonna kind of push this into the interior and I'm gonna, we're gonna hide everything on the back side so that it's not showing. So let's go ahead and turn our hat inside out. Okay, we have a great place to hide these. There's another, actually another th thread here. All right, so let's let me make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We actually have two threads here we can hide. And one of them's already partially hidden. Remember, we crocheted around that. So I'm just going to go ahead and clip that one because that one does not need to be hidden anymore. And now we're going to thread our needle again. 
and I am simply going to run it underneath the green yarn. You don't want to hide your darker green color under the orange because obviously that's going to show. So whenever you're hiding loose strands, always hide it underneath the same color material. Okay. Actually, this is going to be fine. I could do more, but I'm just going to do this amount because that's not going to be coming undone anytime soon. And cut closely, but make, make sure that we don't cut our crochet stitches. That could be a minor disaster. Now we do have one more orange uh, strand to hide. I'm going to go ahead and hide it. This is what's really fun about this project is you don't have a whole lot of strings to hide. It's just a, a quickie project. And it's one that can bless a lot of people, especially this time of the year when we're out picking our pumpkins in a pumpkin patch or maybe picking apples as the weather gets a bit chilly. If you're living up, you know, in the north where I do, it's not the north. North is kind of in between, I guess, in Maryland, but we do have a lot of apple groves right near my house and have times to go on hay rides and things like that with our church. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, so I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to hide this string. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this two ways. I'm kind of go, going to go up and down. Um, it just kind of gives it a little more security as the hat stretches back and forth. And go ahead and give it a clip. Again, close, but not too close. You don't want to cut your work. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at our completed project. Oops, there's another strand here. Let me go ahead and, and get this strand hidden for you. Okay, now I am really done with this hat. And I think I'm actually going to wear this to a fiber festival this weekend. Hope you enjoyed this project. Um, if you're looking for more crochet with Bonnie, just check out the links in the description of the video below. And um, if you get a chance, also please subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of the good stuff I have coming your way. Okay, God bless you all. Bye-bye.